Fam, what's up? The squad is favorite on Tiwi Knuckle Tendencies, and I am here talking Teresa Weatherspoon, y'all. So, the WNBA season is getting ready to get started, and y'all know the Chicago Sky is one of the teams I got my eyes on. Not only because they're one of the closest teams in proximity to me, um, and I'm hoping to be able to kind of get over and take uh, take take in some games, but Camila Cardoso is there, Angel Reese is there, <clears throat> one of the most interesting dynamic duos probably uh, coming into the league this season. Uh, especially coming in as rookies, so definitely going to be keeping an eye on them, especially because I'm a Gamecock fan, an LSU fan, SEC fan, a Teresa Witherspoon fan, um, and excited to see what these three rookies coming in together are going to be able to, to do uh, and and excited for what they're going to be able to bring to the city of Chicago and the Chicago Sky, who are not that far removed from being a national champion. Uh, and, I, and I think putting, putting together a foundation that's going to allow them to get back to um, competing for, for uh, I said national champion, y'all. Uh, y'all know I'm tripping. WNBA champion. So forgive me. Uh, WNBA champion. Not that far removed from being a WNBA champion. Uh, and and I think, like I said, Atlanta Foundation is going to get them back there. So as we get ready to go into the season, uh, I realize that that some people may not really uh, know Teaspoon or understand like her background or know anything about her as a player. So just wanted to take a little bit take take a little bit of time to kind of highlight her. And uh, me and Coach are gonna kind of talk through uh, what we what we think and expect from her coming into the season. So uh, let me tell you a little bit about Teresa, and then uh, me and Coach are gonna uh, break it down. So Teresa Witherspoon, she's often regarded as one of the pioneers of women's basketball. She's had a distinguished career both as a player and a coach. Born uh, December eighth, nineteen sixty five, Pineland, Texas, Texas, Texas woman, uh, excelled in basketball, played at Louisiana Tech. Led her team to an NCAA championship in 88 uh, under coach uh, Kim Mulkey. Her professional playing career spanned several leagues and countries, including a memorable uh, stint with the New York Liberty. She was there from 97 to 2003. Uh, Teaspoon is known for her tenacity, her leadership on the court. Uh, she does not quit. Five-time WNBA All-Star, two-time Defensive Player of the Year, legendary half-court shot in the 99 WNBA Finals. Uh, still one of the most iconic moments of the WNBA's young young. Uh, young history. If you haven't seen it, look it up. Uh, like I, like I said, one of the most iconic moments um, in league history. After a playing career, she really just kind of transitioned into coaching and took to it kind of naturally. Served as a head coach for Louisiana Tech and assistant coach in in the NBA with the New Orleans Pelicans, where she focused kind of on player development and defensive strategies. Um, did a lot with with, with being able to help develop Zion uh, Williamson, and now we're seeing her transition into a head coaching job here in the WNBA. In 2023, she uh, accepted the new challenge of being the head coach of the Chicago Sky, uh, and, and everybody's excited about it. You know, I think her her legacy in the game, her proven track record in player development and as a coach, um, solidifies her as you know made and and uh, made and qualified to do this job. She's got she, she she's got a heck of a, a rookie team coming in uh, with with the uh, Angel, Camilla, Bryn. Um, Gonna be able to build around them and then putting them with the, the likes of like the Diamond De Shields, the, the 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 Kennedy. I can't think of Kennedy's last name, Kennedy, um, and the other ladies that are there in Chicago. The coach is gonna have the opportunity to pet to pair uh, Angel Reese and Camilla Cardoso, uh, the dynamic duo that she has coming in the rookie class, along with I'm sorry, with uh, also Brenda Maxwell, uh, with with Diamond De Shields, Dana Evans, uh, Marina Mabry. Elizabeth Williams, Lindsey Allen. Uh, th these ladies are going to be able to make some noise right away. Uh, I was listening to Angel talk. I'm, I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited for, for the energy that Angel is bringing. I don't think people are uh, are giving Angel enough credit for how she's going to show up and show out here this, this season. And I, I think people are, are really um, underestimating the way Coach Teaspoon is going to be able to uh, coach these girls up and bring them along. Uh, she, she, player development and defense. Is, is, is her backbone. That's that's what her career is built on, uh, and that's what championships are made on. And so being able to develop her players and being able to have an understanding, number one, of kind of the the coaching style that Angel Reese is coming from, having played for, for Coach Mulkey, and then, the and of course, the coaching style that Camila Cardoso is going to be coming from under Coach Big Drip, Don Staley, with her and Coach Teaspoon both having played in the league and having their own relationship probably as both players and, and coaches on and off the court. Um, I'm sure that she'll be able to relate to them and bring them along and understand the type of background that they're coming from and, and the work ethic and what was expected of them and being able to coach them up into 
uh, WNBA caliber players from the platforms that they're that they're bringing. So when you, when you think about Coach Teaspoon, she's gonna coach hard. She's gonna keep it real. Uh, she she's gonna do some cussing probably. Um, uh, if she if it's the teaspoon that I remember, you you gotta expect that intensity from her. But it's not gonna be done from a place of uh, malice. It's not gonna be done from a place of um, hurt. It's gonna be done from a place of um, being able to make sure that players understand what's expected to expected of them. Um, being able to give them space and grace to be able to grow and develop. Um, being able to also have them understand that they're loved even when they're messing up. Take your time, um, learn the game, but be serious. You know, uh, Angel said one of the things is that it, it, everything happens really, really fast. You got to be catching on fast. There's no time to be sitting around and still studying the the playbook. Uh, th- things are moving fast. You, they expect you to be a professional, and I think that Coach Teaspoon is a perfect coach for both Angel and and, and Camilla to be able to um, bring out the best of them while she while while simultaneously developing them into the best players that they're going to be able to be. Uh, under 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 Teaspoon's guidance, I believe that this, this team should be expected to enhance his, in, in his defensive uh, strategies because that's that's kind of where Teaspoon has uh, consistently emphasized in her coaching philosophy. Philosophy, her ability to develop young players will also be crucial as the sky integrates these new talents that I was just talking about, including uh, uh, Brenna as well, and drafts into the roster, aiming for a blend of. I guess they're going to be looking kind of like for a good balance of experience and youth. I think that you will have to take advantage of Camilla's size at six seven right away. And I think you're going to have to take advantage of um, just the sheer will and the dog that Angel is going to bring um, and, the, and the energy that she's going to bring. Because like she said, she's going to be vocal uh, like she always is. She's going to challenge the players. Like she said, she's been watching them. So she wants to um, play alongside them, but she also wants to make sure that she's um, holding them accountable and making sure that they're getting that, that they're giving their very best and the team is getting the best out of everybody uh collectively so I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing how she grows as a leader under a teaspoon and as a, as a member of the chicago sky uh given her focus on defensive player development i think that the chicago the chicago sky will show a significant improvement uh, right away on the defensive end uh they may come along a little slower on the offensive end but i think that they'll be able to um kind of mask some of that by being able to kind of slow the pace down sometimes and just kind of go into the big and take advantage of having Cardoso um, until they kind of figure out what that what that offensive identity is. Her leadership style encourages uh, resilience and determination. I expect her to instill a strong, like, fighting spirit in the team. Like, it ain't going to be no quit in the Chicago sky. They're not here for no games. When the ball go up, it's blue collar. They're going to work. And, and, and that's what I'm expecting from them all season. Uh, the success of the Chicago Sky under with us, on, under under Teaspoon is gonna gonna largely depend on how well the players adapt to, to her coaching style, and uh, of course health and performance of the key players. But I, I actually think that she is, uh, even though she can she can she can be tough, I think she's gonna be a player style coach. I think she's really gonna be good for the league. I think this is uh, absolutely great for the league to have another WNBA player coming in to, to coach and be able to pr- provide uh, her expertise as a former player uh, at, the, at the college level um, as well as at the at the professional level and then um, being able to pull from her experience um, as a assistant coach and then uh, both in college and in the NBA is going to be um, just absolutely awesome for for her for her players because I think she'll be able to bring it be able to bring some different perspectives and maybe some different type of workouts and some different type um, of strategies to to uh, to to attacking um, some of the things that they're going to face this season so I think her first season as a coach of the Chicago Sky uh, you know it's highly anticipated she's got a rich experience and a strong focus on fundamental aspects of the game uh, and I think she's uh, set to uh, make a significant impact so um, while we don't exactly know what that looks like until the end of the season I don't 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 bet against uh don't bet against teaspoon. I think her leadership just in itself promises a, a revitalized and more competitive Chicago sky. So I'm on the lookout for that. And with that, I'm gonna go ahead and uh jump over here with coach and we're gonna uh, kind of chop it up and go back and forth about kind of what we think about uh coach teaspoon being added as the as the coach. Coach, we we got we got a uh, got Chicago sky. Got Chicago sky. And uh I don't know if you saw, but I had to have a had to send a love letter to the WNBA about some of the stuff that I've been seeing. And then, mm-hmm. you know, uh, you, you you went to school with with with, with uh, Nina Ross. And yes. She she taught me about background. And, I, you know, I, I wasn't always interested in the background, but a lot of people looking in the background. And, and, and it's a lot of eyes on the WNBA right now. And it's, it's important that they 
that they, that they capture this lightning in a bottle. Mm -hmm. It's not going to come like this again. And if they fumble this, I'm afraid that the talent coming behind them may not trust them. Mm -hmm. They may not, they may not trust them with this. Um, so as we start to look at, at the season, we got, we got coach teaspoon, who's a rookie, rookie WNBA coach. Um, and I just wanted to talk about her a little bit with you, Coach, and, and kind of see what you what you think. So she's coming as the new head coach of the w, uh, uh, WNBA Chicago Sky. Uh, she posted a 99-71 record as the head coach at Louisiana Tech. Okay, now her first coaching position was in 2007. She was head coach at Westchester Phantoms of the American Basketball Association, the ABA, Westchester Phantoms. Mm -hmm. um, I want to say – she led the Lady Texas to back-to-back -to -back NCAA tournament appearances. And I was also, she was also coaching at her at her alma mater. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, she played there. I want to say that she won a national title in 88. Mm -hmm. All-time assist leader in the history of the school, 958. Jersey retired at La Tech. Mm -hmm. Six LA six, six La Tech recipients to be honored with a statue at the university. You know, I love when they got a statue, Coach. I love when they got a statue and they still live it. Mm -hmm. Well, you can take it. I'm gonna go take a picture of my statue. That's something. Mm -hmm. uh, international level, she's won gold in '88, bronze in '92. Uh, named six to all to six All Star games in the Italian league during her six seasons playing pro ball in Italy. Two time Russian league champion, inaugural WNBA draft, drafted by the New York Liberty, of course, number ten, the number ten pick. Uh, seven seasons with the Liberty, she led them to the finals in '97 and '99. Final season was with the Sparks in 04. Uh, Defensive Player of the Year in 97. WNBA All-Decade Team Honorable Mention in 2006. WNBA Top 15 Player in 11. Uh, top 20 Best and Most Influential Players in WNBA History. Um, inducted into the LaTeX uh, Hall of Fame, Louisiana Sports Hall of Fame, Women's Basketball Hall of Fame, Naismith Memorial Basketball Hall of Fame, and the Texas Sports Hall of Fame. Uh, and then we had that iconic shot, 99 in the finals. Wasn't ever actually able to get the job done as a champion, but also spent some time down in New Orleans. Is that how you say it? No, New Orleans? Yeah, New Orleans. No, 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 how you say it? Yeah, yeah, spent some time down there in New Orleans as a uh, assistant coach uh, focused on de defense and player development, working with one Zion Williamson. Uh, and I think, I think that – when Zion has been able to display the growth in his game, when he's been healthy enough to display the growth in his game, uh, you can definitely see um, the help that she's been able to give him and the impact she's been able to have on his development uh, from a defensive standpoint and just as a player. Um, so I'm, 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 I'm excited about Teaspoon in, in, in Chicago, Coach. Uh, I don't mm -hmm. think that I don't think that there's a better coach for uh, both Camilla and, and and Angel to uh, to come into the league and play with. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've been able to see any of Angel's pressers. I'm really excited about, about how Angel's talking. Um, I think the league better watch out. Um, mm -hmm. I have now, I don't know, I, I don't, I, we haven't talked, but Angel is now in, in my in my category, one of those that could be rookie of the year if they let her on the floor enough. Um, Angel's, Angel's, um, her attitude and her energy is everything that I expected it to be, but mm -hmm. but I don't think that she's getting enough credit um, right now for how she's showing up and being a professional. Mm -hmm. uh, people are quick to call out uh, the stuff that they don't think that she's doing when I think that she's just being a regular 21-year-old with a million dollars. You know, she catches a lot of flack. She just got her own signature shoe. Uh, shout out Reebok and, and Shaquille O'Neal and, and, and Allen Iverson. Um, of course, they weren't able to offer anything as big as what what Caitlin was able able to get, um, but the fact that she has a signature shoe that's going to be out there, I think, is a wonderful thing. And I think that that's the stuff that we need to focus on, other than uh, measuring people's checkbooks mm -hmm. or comparing people's checkbooks. Uh, it's it's a win for the league to to be able to get any of this stuff out there. So I, I'm excited about what Teespoon is going to be able to do. The relentlessness that she showed on the floor as a player. Um, because she's coming in with a, a defensive and a, and a player development background, that's exactly what the team needs. This is a team that – this is a, a, an organization that's um, not far removed from being a, having been a champion. Um, and I think that there's still some pedigree there. So 
Um, I think they're looking to build off that. But where do you see him going, Coach? Um, I'm glad you said that because that's where I was going with it as far as uh, Teaspoon. Um, I think that I've never seen Teaspoon so focused in all of her interviews. Um, she looks very serious and not to the point of serious where she's not able to have fun, but she looks locked in and loaded and ready to go. Now, you mentioned something about the tenacity. If her personality is going to have a handprint on this team, when you're talking about Cardoso and Reese, do you realize how scrappy and gritty this team is going to be? The 50-50 balls, rebounding, just uh, throwing their bodies on the floor. Because one thing about Teaspoon, she spent half of the game on the floor diving for loose balls, making that extra effort. It's going to be like this. Come on, Uncle Scooby, let me at him. Let me at him. Let me at him. Let me at him. Like Scrappy Um, Do, you hear me? It's going to be like Scrappy Do. I see them having some real tough learning lessons as far as like how to mesh together. That's going to be, to me, the biggest piece. Um, Teaspoon can teach them all of the fundamentals, all of the bases, but as far as like meshing on the floor, that's going to be the the challenge, I think, for, for the rookies, meaning Cardoso and Reese. Oh, um, see, I don't think so. I don't mm-hmm. think so. So Reese came in and said, so I don't know if you saw the pressure. I don't know if you saw the pressure. This is what this is what Reese said, set me up in my chair. This is what she mm-hmm. said. She said, I want to win. Mm-hmm. She said, yeah, I'm a rookie, but I let them know. Yes, I'm a rookie, but I'm here to win. Yes, I'm a rookie, but I'm going to push you. Yes, I'm a rookie, but I'm going to be vocal. Yes, I've been watching y'all play. So I want mm-hmm. the very best out of y'all. I'm here to win. Pour into me. I'm here to learn, but I'm not going to stop being who I am. I'm, right. unapolog- I'm unapologetically me. That right there set the tone. That's the type of attitude you want coming in. Yeah, they not nothing else, Coach. They're gonna be a tough, get your uh, hard hat, get your lunch pail, blue collar type of team. They're gonna have to just they're gonna they're gonna go to work every night. Well, and like I said, three three teams are gonna be there. Nemesis three starting out, which is gonna be Connecticut, New York, and Indiana. Those are the games that are gonna be. You know, those are those East Coast games that are going to have them, you know, kind of – those are going to be the games to watch. That's going to be, to me, the the litmus test to see where are they as far as, like, a team, in my opinion. Um, well, how do you think five? about them being ranked – aren't they ranked number 12? Mm-hmm. How disrespectful. Is it disrespectful? Though? I mean, they haven't played. The, the, the Washington Mystics are better than them? No. But, not even on, not even on paper. But they have experienced players, though. Who? I can't name. Can you name me? I mean, I'm talking about just the years they've been playing together. Because I think, because I, I, because what I feel like is uh, that's that's where Deladon was, right? Yes. Okay, and I feel like their ranking is based on Deladon being there, and Deladon's not playing this year. So that that's the number twelve team yeah. in the league to me. No disrespect, Washington. But on paper and on and the eye test, y'all not better than them right now. Mm. Y- y'all both got to show us, so they can yeah. they, they can be they can both be eleven A and eleven B if you if if you don't want nobody to be the twelve. But I don't believe that Chica- that Chicago Sky should be ranked number twelve. But I think that that could I, I think that that can motivate them as much as that number six motivated South Carolina. Now I'm not saying that Chicago's getting ready to run the table and go right. undefeated, but what I'm saying is that it's going to have them playing above. Probably where people thought they were going to play, as they're as they're as they're as they're you know closing this learning curve and, and building this chemistry. And I, I think that closer who Washington drafted too. And I think um, it was whoever went before Angel. And if you heard what she said, she was like, "Oh, I might go to I might could go to the crib. I might could go to the crib." And then she said, "Washington picked somebody else." And she was like, "Oh, I'm cool." She didn't want to go home. <laughs> she didn't want to go home. She said, "I didn't want to go home. I wanted to come to Chicago. I wanted to play for T Spoon." So she where she wanted to be. And 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 I, and I think we 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 finna find out. I think we finna find out really. We finna really find out who's made of what because that's toughness there. You can't teach toughness, and you can't teach six seven. Well, we yeah, one thing they said that well they have the size, and we know. Um, you know, I'm a huge Angel Reese fan. Even though Angel Reese is listed at, I think they list her at six three. She's probably about six two on a, you know on an average day, but she plays like she's six five. She plays way bigger than than she's listed as. So mm-hmm. they're gonna have a twin tower effect, which I still fully expect Reese to come off the bench initially, uh, but to get starters minutes. But towards the end of I the season. I think they're calling them the, the, the Sears Towers. Oh, that's nice. The I Sears like that. Towers. But, but you know what's interesting to me? 
Um, What's that? When you look at the Comets roster next to the Skies roster, it's real interesting with Spoon being in place now. Spoon, uh, I'm not, you know, you can't recreate a dynasty like that, but the Comets had, you know, I mean, the, the legends, you know, they had Swoops, they had Tina Thompson, mm-hmm. they had uh, Arcane, uh, they had Cooper. Mm-hmm. Uh, when you look at their team, you know, you can see Cardoso, you know, mm-hmm. Reese. Uh, mm-hmm. Wait a minute, I had the roster just a few seconds ago. Where we at? Got Diamond to they, Shield. They got, they got, they got, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, oh, I'm sorry, I put a few, oh, yeah. So when you look at their roster, it's almost like they might, you know, I see what you're doing, Spoon. I see what you're doing, Spoon. Spoons, I think, is building a traditional lineup. But well, like well, like she said, I don't know if you saw her pressure. Because what Spoon said her. was what Spoon said was you don't have a lot of teams that have bigs that are playing back to the basket. Right, and so now there's I'm my point. With, that I was literally about to say that she's building I'm a traditional. With, yep. Yeah, I'm coming with the bigs with the back to the basket, mm-hmm. and, and, and I'm kicking out. Um, exactly. But, but the first thing, the first thing that you're gonna have to be on a team is a is a dog, and so, you know, outside of Las Vegas, uh, I don't know top to bottom if there's gonna be a, a, another another team of dogs. Um, so, I, there there are dogs with, without throughout the league, but dogs throughout. Up and down, cause see, you got to be a dog in their practice. Cause Angel's talking, Camilla ain't backing down. She's no, talking, she not. yes, she right. Not. Diamond the Shield's not backing up. If the rookies is talking, everybody got to get to talking, right? Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. that's why I don't think it's gonna take a long time uh, for the chemistry to build because that thing is gonna get to uh, whatever it's gonna blow up to, right? Cause you go through your, you, 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 you know, okay, what you storming, Norman, whatever it go, come on, you know, the <laughs> levels right, right, of uh, the so, levels of, uh, 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 yeah. of team building, right? They yeah. gonna get through them things real, real quick with the with the with the trash talk. It's mm-hmm. going on in practice, right? So they're gonna get to the uh come on man, let's go get something to eat uh quickly. You understand, <laughs> right? Yeah. You know, because contrary to what everybody believes, you know, he, teaspoon is the H N I C over there, right? So That's contrary right. to what everybody believes, right? Let's come on, yeah. let's go get something to eat then. Right. So that thing is gonna come together. That thing yeah. gonna come together because they're not gonna be nothing but real with each other. There right. ain't gonna be no beating around the bush there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now it, it, it may be, you know, you may have to, you, you, your armor may get a little tinged at first. You may have to, you may have to toughen your skin up a little bit to mm-hmm. be in Chicago. But I mean, it get cold anyway, get bitter, toughen your skin up anyway. Uh, but I think that they're gonna, that you're, you're either gonna make it or you're gonna ask for out of there. Yeah, and I was going, you know, you know, in between. I was gonna ask you something before, uh, again. I, I was looking at them a little bit. Uh, are you familiar with Taya Reamer? I'm not. That's the not, rookie not, that they drafted. Him. Yeah, I, I don't. I, I'm. I'm trying to. I don't know who that is, but she's a. a she's a rookie, um, that they drafted, and there's not much information on her. It just says Taya Reamer, not even from a school or anything. So I don't. I'm like, where are you from? Oh uh, like, no! Now I know that some people had. There was some. Uh, some international. Some international dra- uh, players drafted as well. Is it possible that was an international player? I'm yeah, not sure. it I has yeah, maybe but they she also they the also got Brenda Maxwell, mm-hmm. right? From, Brenda from, Maxwell from, from from Gonzaga. From Gonzaga, exactly. Was other was the other, was the other person that I the other player that I was going to say, and I think yeah. um, coming out of Gonzaga, I think that's a basketball school. You know, I think that I think that uh, they're very aware of, of the players and the personalities that they drafted, and they drafted people that are either going to be able to, um, you know, be 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 able to be able to take the criticism and be br- brutally honest. Mm-hmm. Um, without losing the love and that's what i think it's gonna be about you know i think that it, it's gonna be it's gonna be a place where uh you you, you can make the mistake um and, and still be on the team but but like angel said it's moving fast and you know you, you can make a mistake a couple of times but like you don't have time to be sitting down to read the playbook now you gotta you gotta know what's going on mm-hmm. you gotta be focused so yeah and then and looking uh, at one other thing about their roster when i was talking about that comments next to the sky we know about the five starters. Well, let's say the seven great players on that Comets team, that historical Comets team. But let's not forget the Comets went about 10 deep. It was a team effort. I see some of the similar things with the sky. They have a deep, they're going to have a deep roster. Spoon is all about that. I think mm-hmm. what, what Spoon brings to this team is showing them how to be professionals. What Spoon brings to this team is showing them how to preserve and conserve energy 
what Spoon also said in the part of the press conference that you mentioned that I didn't see about bringing the bigs to the game. So the only the only barrier they could run into is, I mean, it's an oxymoron to say when you run into one of those teams that's just lighting you up from three, that might be a problem. But that would be a problem for anybody. Um, I think they're going to be an opportunistic running team, but they're going to focus on you got to play our style. I don't see them scoring more than 70-something points a game. They're going to have a, a, a beat-you-down type of game where they back you down, slow it up, mm-hmm. hold you. They're going to play defense, defense, defense. Like you said, their sessions are going to be so heated. Defense is how you get on the floor with Spoon. That's just the bottom line. If you're not playing defense, you're not going to play for her. That's oh, absolutely. absolutely. So, yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited to see that. Um, as far as with the Washington, I hear you what you're saying. I see your point, but I still need to see Chicago play some games. I'm not saying oh, yeah. that, they're, that they're better than them, but those rankings will change real soon. <laughs> and, and not and and, and, and it, you know, this is another thing that I was going to say about about this team that, that's really interesting is uh, who are they? You know, and that's not a knock against them, but who are they? There's not a, a real big name there. No, the biggest not. names are probably the two rookies. And who? Yeah. what are y'all going to say? Because y'all the rookies, right? So everybody, what I'm saying is it, it's going to be a level playing field for everybody to kind of join and build this thing around who's going to be the leader. And it's going to emerge based on uh, how they how they show up and show out every every day at practice. Um, and who's the most vocal and, and uh, I think who, who does the most to get – to get the buy-in from the rest of the team. So I'm you know, interested one, one to see. One last point on that Washington part you mentioned. I want, mm-hmm. I'm trying to remember, did Della Don announce after the draft or before the draft that she wasn't playing anymore? Uh, before the draft. We've been through that. Okay. Okay. Because and remember, one, she wanted out. Yeah. Yeah. And they didn't want to let her out. So, I mean, you know, uh, you know, I, you know, I got, the, they got Christy Tolliver. Yeah, and, and, and I think honestly, Scott Grayson has a good chance of making that team. I'm happy for yeah. her. I was a big, I was a big, honestly, Scott Grayson fan. I liked her game. I, I like big guards. You know that sense. I like big guards. I like the way you know she turned them shoulders. She going to the rim like you know, mm-hmm. file me or let me go. <laughs> you know, I like that. Uh, oh yeah, underrated handle. Yeah. I like, I like her. But this is going to be oh. a Leah Edwards team. I think it's going to be a Leah Edwards team. Um. You think so? Yeah, it's going to be Aaliyah Edwards' team. Um, she's going to break out. Gino has a system. I think Aaliyah Edwards is going to see uh, in the league, like, wait a minute. I can. I have this much freedom to do this? <laughs> you know? Uh, hmm. Unless they double her, but we'll see. We'll see. Over, <laughs> over, uh, over, over, honestly, Scott Grayson. Yeah, Aaliyah Edwards is going to be going to be tough. Okay. Aaliyah Edwards is going to be tough on that team. Because, again, remember we <sighs> – this is not planned, you all. It's not scripted. We talked about this. We said the changing of the garb in the league or show way back. We both talked about styles in the league, both NBA, WNBA. We said it's going to a smaller lineup, the faster shooting jump. But then we said the teams that are traditional that have a big. Bye.